Hey everyone, this is just a quick video today of a request that I got on the Phaser Game Makers group. And if you're not already a member of that, you may want to check that out. And I got a request from Oz. Good morning, everyone. I am just new in the field of game dev and also new at Phaser 3, currently having a hard time creating an image button. And he sent some pictures along. So what he wants to do is if you click one of these thumbnails, it'll change the big image. And I've agreed to put together some code for him to show him how I would do it. So let's get started. Code monkey, get up, get coffee. Code monkey, go to job. All right, I'm set up with a local server here. And I know I've been using Webpack a lot in the videos lately. And to be honest, I go back and forth between uh, XAMPP and Webpack. And if I'm just doing some prototyping or some quick example, a lot of times I'll go to XAMPP. If I'm doing a project for a client or some game that I'm going to release, I usually go back to Webpack. But I'm just doing it on a local server today. And I'm using the utility template to save time. And I've got a few keyboard shortcuts and in my snippets in Sublime here. But I think you'll still be able to understand it all. I'll explain it as I go best I can. Now, first of all, I've got some images over here that I downloaded from the web, and I've numbered them from one to six. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can iterate through them very quickly. So let's go ahead and preload those. For var equals one to six, and we need to preload that image, this load image, and we need the key, and I'll set it at image plus i. And the path to the image is images plus i plus png. And we're going to do the same here. We're going to loop through to create those images. And I'm going to create the big cards first. This image, and I'll change that to let card equals this add image and put it at 0, 0 for the moment because I'm going to make an align grid in a moment. And if you don't know what that is, I'll explain when I make it. This add image and the key being image plus I. Well, let's go ahead and test that out so far. Okay, there they are all up there. And the align grid is part of the template, something I made to be able to align things up, uh, whether or not you're on mobile or regardless of the screen size. We're going to turn the whole screen into a grid. So this A grid equals new align grid, and we need to pass in a scene, which is this, the number of rows, which is 11, and the number of columns, which is also 11. And we can show the grid by saying this A grid show numbers. Here we go, and let's put the cards over here at number 52. This A grid, place at index, 52, and card being the object. Great, there they all are. And let's scale it to the size of the screen, because if we go into mobile, it will still be the same number of pixels, and it won't grow or shrink with the screen. And we can fix that by using something else that's built into the utility template, the align class, which aligns things right and center and such, but it also has a scale in it. So align scale to game width, card, and let's make it 25% of the game's width. Great. I'm going to go ahead and take that off of mobile, back onto desktop. And we're going to need to keep track of all those cards, because right now they are cards right on top of each other. So, for example, if I said 52 plus I, then you can see all the cards are there. They're just being stacked on top of each other. So we can use a group to do that. We can also just make an array. That's simple enough. This card array equals new array, just a couple of brackets. And we're going to push that card onto that array. This card array push card. And we'll make a couple of functions here, one called all off. And we're going to loop through those cards. So just copy that loop there. And this card array. But we need to go instead of 1 through 6, 0 through 5. Because arrays start at 0. 
and we're going to have to take account of that too when we click the cards later. This card array I visible equals false. And we'll make another function, turn card on, and we'll pass an index into that. And this card array index, and we're going to go minus one because we're going to be passing a number one through six to that. And the array, since it starts at zero and we just push the cards onto there, it's going to start at zero and then zero, one, two, three, four, five. And so we're going to pass in one to six, we'll minus one, and we'll, then we'll have the correct value. And then we're going to turn that on true. Now to test this, I'm going to put here window scene equals this. This is just good for testing. You don't want to have this in development because it exposes everything to the global namespace here in the dev console. So I can say scene all off, scene, turn card on, number two, and there. So we can turn the cards on and off now. Now let's make the other cards, and I'm just going to put them here on the side. We could put them in a grid, you can put them wherever you like, but just to save time, and I'll just copy all this code here to make a second set of cards and I'm going to make them smaller. Let's just make them 10%. And we can place them on number 12 and then 23, 34. So what we're going to do is start at 12 and then add 11 for every next card. So that would be 12 plus i times 11. And then we don't need to put that onto the card array because that's only for the big cards. Let's see if that works. So we got any errors? Nope. Great. So they're all lined up over there. They're a little close together there, but that should do the trick. So now we just need to make that card interactive. And we need to add an event listener so when the card is clicked. But instead of putting an individual listener on each one, because we could say card on pointer down, but then we have to have a listener on every card. And the fewer listeners we have, the faster our games will run. So what I'm going to do is put it on the scene. This input on game object down. And we're going to make a function called this card clicked. And I'm going to bind it to the scene so that this keyword will still work the same. This card click bind this. Make that function. And that is going to be past a pointer, and it's going to be past the object, the game object that you clicked. And we'll just call that the card. And then we'll be able to get the card that is clicked, the object, but we don't know how it relates to the big card. Well, since we're using JavaScript here, and it's a dynamic language, you can add properties on the fly. We can just say card index equals i. And to test this out, we'll just log out console log card index. And then we can see which one is clicked. I got one, two, three, four, five. I'm missing a card. Ah, because I only went from 1 to 6 instead of 1 to 7, it only counts up to 1 less than that. So we change that to 7 and change that to 6 down here in the all off and preload on 7 as well. Now we've got our six cards there. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now all we have to do is link that to our functions and we'll say this turn card on, card index, and whenever we call turn card on, we'll turn all the cards off and then only turn back on the one we need. There we go. Changing the image when it's clicked. Well, 
That was very quick, but I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you find it useful. If you've got any questions, just leave the comments below or contact me in the Phaser Game Makers group on Facebook. Thanks for watching.